oysters are often thought of as an aphrodisiac. They've been thought of as an aphrodisiac since ancient times. Um, oysters used to be a really, really prevalent food uh, in New York and all over this country, and they were really cheap. Now people consider them a delicacy. A lot of people go out to eat oysters, and you know you can pay as much as three or four dollars a piece for an oyster in a restaurant. But you know if you learn the simple techniques and how to open them yourself at home, they're actually relatively inexpensive. You can probably eat oysters at home for you know less than a buck a piece. Well, clearly opening them is really hard. When you cook them, they open like any other bivalve, like cooking a mussel or anything like that. But in order to open a live oyster, they've got a shell and they don't want to come out. So we need to use some special tools. Uh, people have developed different style oyster knives for different locations and different locales and different shapes of oyster over time and use those to pry the shells apart. So this is a small display of different shaped oyster knives. Um, this knife is a New Haven style oyster knife. Uh, the little curve at the tip is what makes it a New Haven style. This is my favorite right here. This is a Victorinox Forchner with a nice non-slip handle. This is a Providence style oyster knife. Notice that the blade is about the same length as the New Haven style, but it's flat. This is a French style, um, very short oyster knife. Oysters grow off the coast of France as well. Has this nice guard here, so you're gonna save your hand from knocking into that sharp, sharp shell. This is a New York style oyster knife. Very, very long blade, very small handled. There are reports from the Dutch when they first came to Brooklyn of eating oysters uh, harvested out of the Gowanus that measured uh, 10 to 12 inches across. So when you're taking on the job of opening the oyster, it helps to understand the anatomy of the animal and what you're doing to it. So it's two shells that are connected at a hinge that's sort of this corner here. And then there's a muscle that's holding them together, and that was connected right here on this shell, and it was connected right there on that shell. So I'm gonna take the knife, and I'm gonna insert it here, which is where the two shells are connected. And I'm just gonna try and get it in there so it's lodged well in there, and I'm just gonna turn it to the side a little bit. And you can see that the two shells start to come apart as I do that. And then you can get the knife in there a little bit more and give it a really good twist. It's gonna help you to open the oyster. Then I'm going to bring the knife around to where that muscle is. The muscle's right about here. I'm going to bring the knife around to where that muscle is. Just try and scrape it off the top shell so that I can leave my oyster whole in the bottom shell. Then the last thing you need to do, you want to, you know, if you've got any little bits of shell in there, you want to clean them out. You don't want to be eating those. The last thing you have to do is you want to take the knife and you want to scoop it under the oyster because you still have to separate it from the shell before you can eat it. And then once it's separated, just go ahead and eat it. Mm, salty, fatty, tastes like the ocean. So opening an oyster, holding it in your hand as I do, can be a little bit dangerous. The shell is really sharp, and if you're not careful, you can also slip with the knife, potentially stab yourself in the hand. Uh, not a good way to start your dinner party. There are a number of different ways to sort of help mitigate that. Uh, there are some wooden blocks like this one that you can use that hold the oyster um, in place while you're working with it. Uh, I also prefer just to use a towel, and usually if you use a towel on the counter, you can open oysters without any worry uh, and any trouble and any injury. If you need any knives for opening your oysters for Valentine's Day, we've got you covered, and if you need any advice, stop by and ask us. Happy Valentine's Day from the Brooklyn Kitchen.